Are we getting started? Good afternoon, colleagues, ladies and gentlemen. It's a responsible mission, so I'll be looking into my notes. We are beginning the panel session. Uh, there are some technical issues. Let's check the sound system. Now that's fine. Let me repeat. We are beginning the panel session of the dissertation board for the defense of Alexander Kruatov for the doctoral degree of Doctor of, Sci of Mathematics and Physics. Specialization, system analysis, control, and information processing. The topic of the thesis is optimization models and methods for equilibrium traffic flow assignment in road networks. By the relevant order of St. Petersburg State University, I, Alexander Prosovo, Doctor of Physics and Mathematics, Professor of the Department of Modeling for Economics, was appointed Chair of the Dissertation Board. Allow me to introduce my colleagues, members of the Dissertation Board. Leon Petrasian, Doctor of Physics and Mathematics, Professor of the Department of Mathematical, mathematical Theory of Games and Statistical Decisions. Adil, Adil Erzin, Doctor of Physics and Mathematics, Institute of Mathematics of the Siberian Department of the Russian Academy of Sciences, and Igor Kononov. Two members of the board have joined us remotely, Igor Kononov and Alexander Dolgoy of RMIT Atlantic and uh, Igor Kononov from Kazan Federal University. Under the federal law, number 127, as of the 23rd of August 1997, on science and state scientific and technical policy, St. Petersburg State University is entitled to confer academic degrees. The corresponding order on the procedure of granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University was issued on the 1st of September. 2016. According to this order, the panel discussion is valid, providing two thirds of the appointed board members are present. The total number is not to be fewer than four people. The dissertation board today consists of five people, five of which are present including two board members who are attending the defense remotely, Igor Kononov and Alexander Dolgoy. They have joined us remotely via Skype. Therefore, we have a quorum. Let me announce the agenda of the panel session. The panel discussion cannot exceed two hours. We can finish earlier. We shall see. Item one, the chairman's presentation about the documents submitted by the candidate for the degree and their conformity with the requirements answers to questions, if any, five minutes. Number two, the candidate's presentation providing an overview and findings of the research, no more than 15 minutes. Questions to the candidate regarding the presentation. No more than two minute, minutes for each question. The candidates reply to the questions. Chair's overview of external reports submitted on the CIDES. As all the reports were posted on the official SBB website, only critical remarks and questions are read out. Number five, reports on the CIDES. 
members of the board are requested to provide their viewpoints, critical remarks, and questions. No more than 10 minutes per person. That's, that was a very effective solution. Thank you for this agenda. Number six, Chair's report on this. this. The time is not specified here, but I'll try to keep brief. Number seven, the candidates' comments about the reports on the CDS. No more than 15 minutes. Item eight, questions from the audience. The so-called Q&A session. The floor will be given to the not board attendees. They can give a brief account of their ideas and or ask questions to the candidate about the research. Here, we had one question. reports have really many questions and if we compile them into a set of questions if we take all the questions from all the reports then it will be difficult for the candidates to cover them all so my idea is to let the candidate answer the questions after each report I find it more convenient and more effective is there anyone who is against this decision? No, thank you. Item nine. Do you, during the um, open discussion, I would like all those willing to take the floor, introduce themselves, and fill in the registration form. Number nine. The candidates' comments about the talks given by non board members of the board, no more than five minutes. Item 10, presentation of the candidates to the supervisor, no more than three minutes. Number 11, then we have a five-minute break before the open balloting on conferring or non-conferring the academic degree. The discussion of the results of the defense is not broadcast. Item 12, open balloting, vote counting and recording the results in the minutes of the session. 13, deciding upon conferring or not conferring the academic degree. And finally, candidates closing speech, no more than two minutes. Before we proceed with the agenda, I kindly ask you to switch off your mobile phones. This might disturb the work of the dissertation board. The panel session of the dissertation board is being recorded and broadcast on the internet and interpreted into English and Russian. So let me proceed with the agenda. The first item on the agenda is the overview of the documents submitted by the candidate. The CDS of Alexander Kruatov was submitted in compliance with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order and regulation on granting academic degrees. Specialization, system analysis, control, and information process. The topic is optimization models and methods for equilibrium traffic flow assignment in road networks. The dissertation board was set on the 5th of, on the 3rd of May, 2018. And I have already introduced the board members to you. The candidate has submitted the following documents to the academic secretary of St. Petersburg State University. Number one an application to Professor Nikolai Kropachev, Rector of St. Petersburg State University, on the approval of the CDS for the defense submitted uh, on the 22nd of February 2018. Then, reports of the academic supervisor, Professor Zakharov. Number three, list of published works containing 20, 29 items which describe the research findings. Ten works have been published in peer-reviewed journals recommended by the Ministry of Education and Science, and 16 were published in Web of Science, CC, and Scopus index, indexed journals. 
One chapter was published in an English language monograph. He has also submitted a thesis in Russian and English, a printed version with a manuscript copyright and a digital copy. The thesis format in a reference list comply with the state standards. The above mentioned documents complied with item 12 of section 3 of the order on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. It's appendix 1 to the order I have already mentioned previously. If there are no questions about the submitted documents, members of the dissertation board, are there any questions about the submitted documents? No questions. That's right. Then the floor is given to the candidate. The report should last no longer than 15 minutes. Good afternoon, dear members of the dissertation board. Good afternoon, dear guests. Uh, the topic of my thesis is optimization models and methods for equilibrium traffic flow assignment. My research. Unfortunately, we cannot see the candidate. I see only the members of the dissertation board. Could you please? help us. I think we should see the candidate as well, uh, but we can only hear his voice. Let's make a short technical break. Нет, просто повернуть на него и все, что там вводить. Сейчас трансляция отключена, технический перерыв, поэтому... We continue the broadcast. Good afternoon, dear members of the dissertation board. Uh, the thesis of my 
The topic of my thesis is optimization models and methods for equilibrium traffic assignment. My research advisor is Professor Viktor Zakharov. The purpose of the study is the development and proof of theoretical principles for mathematical methods and algorithms which could be used for social economic problems in the sphere of traffic control and road network design in large cities. The focus of the research is the traffic flow assignment, nonlinear constraint optimization, duality, and bi-level optimization. In my thesis, I have set up a number of objectives, which are more specific. To develop models and methods for route flow traffic assignment, to develop projection approach for link flow and route flow assignment, to develop decomposition algorithm for link flow and route flow assignment search, to develop methods and approaches for transit network optimization, to formalize bi-level optimization models for different applications in the sphere of transportation planning, uh, to formalize multi-supplier and multi-consumer power smart grids. The major research findings are as follows. New theoretical principles of mathematical traffic flow theory are developed to cope with network optimization problems. New dual traffic assignment problem is formulated and solved. The problem establishes a link between equilibrium traffic time and traffic demand between the, a pair of source and sink. New projection algorithms based on explicit form of projection operator for link flow and route flow assignment are developed. A new class of network games is formalized, which allows to establish a relationship between selfish and group routing. New decomposition technique has been developed. This decomposition technique is for parallel subnetworks. Traffic assignment problem in a network with transit subnetwork is formulated and solved. New approaches for emission reduction, signal control, and time dependent vehicle routing are developed. New technique for OD matrix assessment is developed as well. Model of power smart grid with many users, supplies and consumers is formalized. So please have a look at the slide. The road network is modeled by a directed graph G. The edge of this graph is characterized by a specific length and a non-negative capacity. A set of vertices of pairs of origins and destinations W is a specific. The travel demand between each pair in W is also specific. The variable XJW models flow through the edge, which is made by the pair of origin and destination. So we have a smooth non-decreasing function. This is T and J. This smooth non-decreasing function models delay or travel time. The most common type, type of link performance function is given on this slide. The major feature is that the function is positive if the arguments are greater than zero or equal to zero and the derivative is not negative if the argument is positive. The underlying principles of my research are the principles of war drop. According to the first principle, the travel time on all routes actually used is equal and less than the time which would be spent by a single vehicle on any unused route. According to the second wardrobe principle, the average travel time is a minimum. Here you see the situation 
described by the second principle of wardrobe. And it is clear on the intuitive level, as you can see. To describe the situation uh, described by the first principle of wardrobe, we have introduced new sets, such as R, which is a route between a pair of sink and source. And we have also introduced such notations as F, which characterizes the route between the pair of source and sink. Therefore, we can formalize it in the following way. The solution of this optimization problem requires with the necessary conditions, i.e. the first principle of Vodro. Moreover, we have an alternative formulation of the problem, which is equivalent to the previous problem in terms of the solution that we get. This is the formulation of the second principle of wardrobe, and you can see it on the slide. Let's consider a network which consists of several routes which do not cross. You can see the problem on the slide. We have introduced AI and VI, and you see it on the slide. We have proven a theorem according to which equilibrium traffic flow assignment can be reduced to the problem of fixed point with an explicit operator. We have proven the convergence theorems. According to this theorem, iteration converge geometrically and under some fairly natural conditions, it is proved to converge quadrically. This set of results has been published in a number of papers and it is related to the third major research finding. Let's consider a network. It has one origin destination pair. It consists of four routes and some of them have common links. So let's represent this network as one which consists of routes that do not cross. In this case, the travel time on each route depends on the route on the flow on this particular route as well as on the other routes which cross this one and this aspect can also be taken into account while solving this problem these are the parameters of the decomposition network as a result, we have a, semi of linear, a sim system of linear equations which allows us to solve the problem. And we know that root flow assignment could easily be converted into link flow assignment, but not vice versa. That's why it's positive to develop root-based algorithms. These results have been published in a number of peer-reviewed papers, and they are related to the fifth research finding. Let's consider this problem, this optimization problem, with a convex separable function with linear constraints. We have proven the following theorem for this class of problems. This nonlinear constraints optimization problem can be reduced to the problem with a fixed point with an explicit operator. And here you can see the notations. We have proven the convergent theorems according to which iteration converge geometrically and under some fairly natural conditions, it is proved to converge quadrically. I'd like to note 
that if we have linear functions, we do not need the start of the iteration process. The results we have obtained are very important for the topic of the thesis and for the area because we are talking about a network and the solution of the problem which can be presented in the following way. You can see it on the slide. We have an incident matrix A tilde and we also have an augmented matrix A tilde B tilde. If we delete the last line we'll get matrix A and vector B. This problem is equivalent to the original problem, but it complies with all the conditions of the theorems we have proven, and we can apply these problems. Therefore, this is a new projection algorithm for link flow traffic assignment. Let's consider a network with a pair of source and sync. Please have a look at the slide. And I can say that we can get the solution by using simple operations over matrices, such as matrix multiplication and matrix inversion. If we have a network with two or more pairs of source and sync, we can use decomposition techniques. The characteristics of the network are given in the table. The travel time on each link depends on the flow between this pair of source and sync within this network but it also depends on the flows between other pairs of source and sync. And we can take this aspect into consideration while solving this problem. In this case, equilibrium traffic assignment, I mean link flow assignment, can be found if we solve a system of linear equations. So these are the results that have been published in a number of papers. Let's consider the following situation. Uh, in this situation, all users are divided into groups of users. Let's consider that each group of users tries to minimize the travel time for each group. The so-called group, comp group competition. Uh, we can formalize this situation in the form of a game and we should use the Nash equilibrium here and this is a non-competitive game. We have proven two assumptions. The first and the second principle of war drop set up the limiting situations in terms of the general time in the network. Secondly, we have proven the continuous increase of the general time if the number of groups of users increases. Here are some s specific features. For example, competitive group of users decrease the general travel time. If all individual users join some particular group. However, the fewer competitive groups we have, the fewer the travel time is. And finally, the centralized navigation system can provide for the minimum travel time in the network. Let's consider a situation when we have both group and individual users of the road network. Group users try to minimize the travel time for the group, while individual users try to minimize their individual time. 
In other words, uh, we have added another player to the game we have discussed before. As a result, we have a new game. We have proven that the Nash equilibrium in this new game leads to the equilibrium traffic flow assignment. Moreover, if there are many individual users, the appearance of a small number of group users will not change the user equilibrium. These results have been published in peer-reviewed journals, and they refer to the first and the fourth major research findings in the thesis. Thanks to the results that we have obtained, we can solve bi-level problems for optimal transport network design. In particular, this is a bi-level problem for optimal capacity allocation. We have proven the theorem that a network which has routes which do not cross means that we should decrease the capacity, to be more exact, increase the capacity of the shortest edge. And this is a very important result, which means that the city administration should increase the capacity of the shortest routes between the origin and destination pairs. For example, they should ban the parking in such areas. Please have a look at the slide. We have studied the networks with transit subnetworks. A network with a transit subnetwork is a part of a network where only special types or special classes of tr transport can use. The underlying principle is as follows. The travel time for specialized vehicles on the network must be lower or equal to the travel time of other vehicles. Here are the notations for, solution, for the solution of this problem. Uh, specialized and common types of transports, and we have also introduced a number of variables which describe the number of users of transit networks and common uh, networks, the number of specialized and common vehicles on each route. We have proven that the solution of this optimization problem leads to the equilibrium traffic assignment in a network with a transit subnet. I have only two minutes left. This result allows us to solve different other problems, such as emission reduction. You can see it on the web slide such problem as the maximization of profits when using toll roads. The results have been published in peer-reviewed journals. We have studied the dual problem of equilibrium traffic assignment to assess OD matrices. We have established a link between the equilibrium travel time and the traffic demand. The results allowed us to develop an algorithm which can be used for modeling, and the results have been published. The methods for equilibrium traffic assignment can also be used for modeling smart power grids. The distribution of power according to the first and second Kirchhoff rules can be found by, by solving the optimization problem. So you see we have 
found a solution to a very important practical application, especially a smart grid with many users. The results have been published in peer-reviewed journals. So the major research findings have been published in peer-reviewed journals, 10 articles in journals recommended by the Russian Minister of Science, 16 papers have been published in the Scopus or Web of Science journals. I have participated in a number of international and Russian conferences and seminars. Some research findings have been used in real-life projects which refer to the improvement of the transportation network in the city of Omsk and we have received a support for the fundamental project in the area of equilibrium transport assignment. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Do you have any questions about the presentation? Are there any questions? No, we don't have any questions. Everything was clear. Do you have any questions? Now let's proceed with our agenda. So we do not have any external reports, so we'll skip this item on the agenda. We'll be listening to the reports of the members of the dissertation board. The floor is given to Professor Petrasian. I will not change the text of the report. At present, problems connected with optimal behavior in conflict situations is very important. I would like to add that 11 people have received Nobel Prizes in this area. So new game theoretical approaches are being developed and they can be applied to different spheres such as management, market equilibrium, advertisement, environmental spheres, and different other spheres. Uh, the, each particular sphere has an impact on the choice of the game. For example, when we model transfer uh, transport assignment, specific game theoretical approach also plays an important role here. The thesis describes selfish and group routing in traffic assignment. Selfish group routing is formalized as a specific non-competitive game. The equilibrium situation is called the wardrop equilibrium. And here different algorithms and game theoretical approach is extremely important, especially when uh, we apply them to congested networks. And I think this is one of the merits of the uh, thesis. The candidate also studies other types of conflict behavior. For example, such issues as modeling of group routing and modeling of simultaneous selfish and group routing have not been studied before. There are some other important issues, for example, the influence of different types of users on the network conditions. Uh, the thesis solves different problems which have specific applications. It means that the relevance of the thesis is beyond any doubt. The first thesis is about individual routing. Here the author introduces the 
major principles and conceptions. And one of the major roles is given to the so-called path-based algorithms for traffic assignment. A root flow assignment and link flow assignment problems are reduced to the fixed point problem. The second chapter is about group competition in a congested network. The candidate has established a link between a system optimum of wardrobe and a Nash equilibrium. And he has suggested a number of game uh, theoretical models. The third and the fourth chapters are divided to the methods of equilibrium traffic assignment. He has proven the quadratic convergence of specific theorems. He has developed a new method for parallel decomposition of the transportation network. The problem of optimal capacity allocation and optimal transit network design is discussed in the fifth and in the sixth chapters. And in this thesis, the author studies group and selfish routing. Individual and group behavior of users of the, trans of the transportation network with a specific transit subnetwork is studied in the sixth chapter. The results allow the author to come to an optimal network design. The next chapters deal with OD matrices assessment, signal control, emission reduction. The methods that have been developed in the thesis are used to model smart power grids with multiple users. The candidate also studies the cases of cooperation and competition of the users of smart power grids. The thesis has a scientific and practical novelty because the author uses a very practical approach here. The methods allowed us to provide solutions for equilibrium traffic assignment in cases of group and individual competition. All the methods and algorithms are proven by mathematical statements and all the results seem to be reliable. Besides, all the research findings are new. I would like to add here that methods have been tested on examples and in real life as well. For example, in the city of Omsk, it proves that the thesis is important because it's not only an example, it's a real life example. Some critical remarks. Formal description of the nonlinear optimization problem on page 23 and on many other pages doesn't seem appropriate because it makes the understanding more difficult. I believe that the candidate has taken this formalized description from the work by the Fermons and Sparrows, but you could have simplified the formalization of this problem. You could have used a different description which would look more simple. Number two, the Steckelberg equilibrium on page 140 is relevant only for cases if the follower has one optimal reaction or when this reaction is known to the leader. But your case is different. If you have full information about the follower's reaction, we have a Nash equilibrium. So Steckelberg equilibrium is not necessary here. On page 146 uh, and in other pages on some formulas, the constant is on the left and the function is to the right. This might be a misprint, but we see this misprint in the key area of the thesis. 
However, the critical remarks do not downgrade my positive impression. This is a complete research work with new results, and the topic complies with the specialization. The research findings have been published in 29 papers in papers recommended by the Russian Minister of Science in Web of Science and Scopus listed journals. This is a very important issue because these journals have very high standards. Moreover, the candidate is a co-author in an English monograph in this area. The author has made presentations at different conferences. So the thesis of Alexander Krulatov complies with major requirements set forth in Order 6A21-1 as of the 1st of September 2016 on granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State University. And Alexander Krulatov can be awarded the academic degree of the Doctor of Physics and Mathematics specialization 051301 system analysis control and information processing i would like to say that i am very honored to be here as a member of the dissertation board this is the first <coughs> thesis that is being defended according to the new rules and this area in our faculty is very uh, relevant, so I'm very happy to be here. Thank you. Now you can answer the, the questions. First of all, thank you for reading my thesis, and thank you for your critical remarks. I'll start with the first one. Yes, from the mathematical point of view, I could have formalized the nonlinear constraint optimization problem in a simple way. But in my case, transportation e engineers uh, are very important, and their research work is also very important. And there they use specialized algorithms, which are more appropriate for my area. Therefore, I think it is quite common to use this formalization, but I believe you are right that you have suggested a more simple solution. As for the Stackelberg, I agree. It wasn't necessary to m mention the Stackelberg equilibrium Yes, I have mentioned this issue, but I agree that in my problems, the situation did not require the mention of Stackelberg. And I agree with the last um, critical remark. I believe that the description of the formula is not quite correct. Now I realize that. Are you satisfied? with the answers. Yes, I'm satisfied. I have a suggestion. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to read out the report. I will ask you to make some brief comments if you Agree? Yes, we agree. Thank you for giving me the floor. It's the first time I'm present at such an unusual defense. These are regulations set by the university. I do understand that, but th that is really an exciting moment for me. I tried to be really creative um, in the reports that I wrote. I was thinking about the relevance of this study and it uh, struck me when I was going uh, from the airport to the, this session because I got stuck in a couple of traffic jams on my way here. Um, I wouldn't have been that nervous um, 
uh, if I um, hadn't had to be here on time. In Europe, they have an interesting Congress. This year it was in Helsinki. Last year it was in Vienna. They have a conference which tackles these uh, traffic assignment issues. They mostly focus on Nash equilibrium, on the certain constraints or conditions. But I mm, haven't seen people focusing on wardrobe principles yet. Maybe mm, here you are more advanced in this um, is, um, respect. My, um, one of my postgraduate students and I also uh, tried to find solutions to the traffic assignment problems. We were also able to achieve certain results. This is telling of the relevance of the study conducted by Alexander Kruatov. I will skip the part of my report which focuses on the results of the study. They really speak about the novelty, the tools the candidate used to achieve these results is, uh, I would even say, classical, strictly mathematical. These are all well-known theorems. It's a single approach that he has used to prove many of the theorems. One of the interesting results, as I see that, um, is the link between the equilibrium. Um, that principle, um, what do you call that? Uh, could you help me? Uh, the system principle and the Nash equilibrium that was an interesting research finding. It's interesting how you can compare these two approaches. Well, talking about the novelty of the study, all the research findings that have been published are really new. Two papers that Alexander published in our journal in the Institute of Mathematics were actually in my folder. I distributed them for review. It was then that I could um, make myself aware of some of the results. It was then that it, when it was clear for me already then that the study was really novel. All the statements and research findings are well substantiated. At one point, though, um, I felt a bit dubious because um, there was a proof of the theorem given. Though this is a well-known theorem which does not require um, any proof. The time uh, duration of movement on the link depends on the time, as it says. The flow on the link also depends on how congested the road is. It also depends on the terminal vortex. Okay, I have some time. I will list all my critical marks first. Number two. Um, in many sections, there are repetitions, sentences, and even complete paragraphs are repeated. Of course, it's convenient when you read it and find um, definitions in each of the chapters. However, I found it tiring at times. A network of parallelized routes is a major simplification. Networks are not always designed like that. Power grids are not always parallelized um, networks. The PR delay function was not was not defined. I mean, you didn't show what this acronym stood for. Some surnames are given in Russian. I would prefer to see them 
to see them in their original spelling because sometimes they couldn't recognize well-known names. Some functions which you described as smooth are not necessarily smooth. They depend on how congested the network is, uh, on delay. signal delay can be calculated using different formulas. Fermo formula analyzes how congested the whole network is. It's not an additive function. Of course, the problem is much more complex when the function is not smooth, it's not additive, it's not linear. However, it might show a more um, realistic picture of how things happen. One more critical remark. It's doubtful that you really needed chapter eight about electrical grids. I don't think you needed that. You did have enough results and they were quite convincing. There are many imitation models and they help to see which flows arise in electric grids. However, here uh, you take a different approach. Maybe I didn't just understand that. Maybe that's interesting. This is it for the critical remarks. It's a well-written study. I had to read it from cover to cover to really make a list of critical remarks, which is not always possible. Sometimes read the conclusion and find loads of critical remarks. So it's a well-structured and a well-written study. It complies with all the major requirements set forth to such studies, and Alexander Kratov can be awarded the desired academic degree of the Doctor of Physics and Mathematics. I'd like to thank you for reading my thesis. I agree that models can be different, and there are models. that are being studied a lot. There are models which take into consideration how congested the flow is. It's a, an independent set of problems. I focused on a smaller class of problems, but this might be a vista for my future research. As for the second critical marks, I agree with that. The CDS is not devoid of certain repetition. I accept it. My idea was that if a person or anyone started reading from the second chapter or the third chapter, it was absolutely convenient and clear for him what it was about. Maybe I was wrong, and that's the wrong approach for a CDS. The major results for non-intersecting routes and for networks with um, one pair of origin destination nodes. In chapter four, I described the methodology. It's about the decomposition of networks, uh, the so-called parallelized networks. If you, the results I obtained there can be used on um, on any grids, on any networks. Yeah, I should have uh, explained what stands behind the BRP acronym, and you were right that I should have provided English surnames in English spelling. I focused on smooth function models this did not anyhow affect the methodology of my research. I will not, I'm go not going to jump in the conclusions. Um, as for chapter eight, the dissertation is really bulky. Maybe I failed to show the link. 
what did it mean? There is a set of tasks, of problems. It's being studied now. One of my papers will be published in the National Journal of System Science. There is a paper in this journal. There are many suppliers on the network, suppliers of electricity and users of electricity, and a uniform grid. It's not the situation when you can transfer energy from one, uh, one to another. This is a uniform grid. So the story is different from the situation when there is someone who has the excess of power and then can share it with someone. This can lead to a blackout. So there are many mathematical constraints there and optimization assignments arise if we focus on this problem as well. This is where we can apply some of the results that we obtained during the study. But perhaps I wasn't, um, I didn't write it in some detail. Do you find the answer satisfying? Yes, absolutely. Professor Kononov, the floor is yours. Can you hear me all right? Yes, absolutely. Then I'm starting. I'll omit the descriptive part of my report. Could you please try to look directly into the camera? We'd like to see you. I'll be reading out. What did I want to say? I'd like to omit the descriptive part uh, of the series. Much has been said about it today. The report was duly submitted and uploaded on the SV website, so you can find the complete text of the report online. I'll focus on some major issues. We're discussing really complex systems. These are systems with many links. This uh, really complex system with complex topology. It's only, it's only natural that it's crucial to identify these classes of tasks for which can be solved effectively, which can solve these optimization uh, problems effectively. For example, to find um, optimal transportation routes. routes. The cities of Alexandra Kuratov has identified many of such classes or sets of problems. It also provides really relevant and effective algorithms to solve these classes of problems. What I also find crucial, and this is something we heard today already, the results of the study are really applicable. It has a high practical value. This is the basic contribution that Alexander Kuratov's research has made into the field. I find that this is what I find personally really important. As for the critical remarks that I have, major critical remarks. There are two theorems, 1.1.1, 1.1.3. They are given in the cities. There are references, and then the candidate provides their proof, which I find unnecessary. If you give references to somebody who uh, proved them, then you don't have to prove them again. Some theorems uh, are given without proof. Sorry, but we cannot see your face. Uh, this, is, this is just because I'm reading the remarks. But you can hear my voice anyway. Uh, page 77, linear delay functions are too simple because usually here we face uh, the tasks of 
um, the task of quadratic programming. There are some inaccuracies on page 90. First, you were talking about um, the step length rule. However, we are dealing with a different thing there. Page 99, my remarks there, the test cases that you provide there is too limited, it's too small. Usually traffic assignment problems are pretty large. You should have compared uh, what you have achieved with some well-known examples. In your thesis, you focus uh, problems with fixed demand. However, if you apply that in practice, you have to consider elastic demand as well, because the number of users and road users depends on how congested the road is. The demand is unstable under these conditions. If you had considered that, your research results uh, should have been more applicable. Then, at one point, you describe a non-linear non traffic assignment uh, problem. However, you do not provide references to relevant works. There are some uh, minor misprints. I consider that the study is well written, it's written at a high level, it's a major contribution into the relevant field of science. I mean the equilibrium problem and traffic assignment. The CDS of Alexander Kratov complies with the major requirements set forth in the order granting academic degrees at St. Petersburg State Universities, and the, and the Alexander Kratov can be awarded the academic degree of the Doctor of Physics and Mathematics, specialization 051301. Thank you. I'd like to thank you for the remarks and for providing the report. So several board members already paid attention to the, the theorems you talked about. I provide them just to show my methodology. It's an example of methodology I used to solve similar um, problems. Page 67. Here, I'd like to thank you for this critical remark. I consulted the this again. It's a theorem about the first and the second wardrobe principles. They are Uh, borderline principles. There I focus on integral solution and I find I say they are equal. Well, you're right. According to Rosenthal, integral solution shows that Wardrobe's solution is a partial solution of Nash equilibrium. I could see that I don't focus on integral solution at all. It was unnecessary in that case. I compare a non-stop assignment. Thank you for this remark. I should correct it. Talking about linear functions, which is too simple, which is which is page seventy-seven. There, I managed to solve explicitly the task of traffic assignment under the condition of individual and group competition for the nonlinear delay functions I could provide an explicit solution for other functions I wasn't able to do that page 19 I accept this critical remark
I should have written sublinear. It's uh, well, let's call it a misprint. Page 99, the volume of a test case in this uh, sphere of traffic flow modeling we deal with. We have one drawback of a research. There are resources where we can make ourselves familiar with test cases. However, here we have an issue. To compare test cases, they have to use the same platform. In Transportation Research Part, part B, 2015, compares different results. It's a very challenging task. Of course, in the future, I'll study all my algorithms using test cases. I'll have to put a lot of effort into that, a lot of time. I based my position upon the, the ability to prove that mathematically. It will be interesting to see how my results behave in a test situation. I agree that I should have considered elastic demand. I think this is something I should focus in my future studies. It's just another step in traffic assignment studies. As for section 8.1, which is which which is about electrical grid. I agree I should have provided a more relevant literature review and I'm sorry for the misprint. That's not a big deal. Thank you. Just a second. I'd like to follow the tradition and say that I find the answers to questions really satisfying. Thank you. Anyway, I should have asked you uh, whether you find the answer satisfying. That's fine. Let's proceed with our agenda. So we have Alexander Dalgoy from France, who has joined us remotely, a member of the dissertation board. Thank you very much. I will be very brief. So the thesis is relevant and very important. The transport assignment problem seems very relevant and important. I believe that the thesis is important from practical and mathematical points of view. The approaches that we see in the thesis and the algorithms, namely game theoretical models and projection algorithms, are also very useful and appropriate. The research findings are very reliable and are proven by mathematical statements. And I believe the thesis is a research finding and the candidate should be awarded the academic degree. As for my questions and critical remarks, my report has been published on the website. So my first remark deals with the survey on traffic assignment methods. I believe this review is quite limited because you did not include many common methods. 
I think you should have included a wider range of methods in this review. Number two, the network design problem was reduced to the optimal capacity allocation. However, the capacity allocation problem is just a part of the general network design problem. And this problem is connected to many other existing problems. I think you should have identified its place in the bigger picture. As for the time-dependent vehicle routing problem, this is a vehicle routing problem with time-dependent delays on links. And I don't think it is an improvement in your thesis. Uh, the traffic emission affects not only the road network itself, but the correspondent urban areas at all. Thus, I believe that Gaussian model used to estimate the emission impact seems not to be the best one. And I have another question which is not in the report. I have this question after your presentation. So in your practical suggestions, could you give more, more exact results? Thank you for reading my thesis and for writing your report. As for your critical remarks, yes, I believe that today there is a classification of models such as Bush-based algorithms, path-based algorithms, and different other algorithms. I have not come across such algorithms in the Russian literature, so I will not translate them into Russian. But you understand what I mean. I did not touch upon this class of problems. I decided to omit them but I believe that I should have mentioned these algorithms as well, at least in the introduction. Critical remark number two. Yes, chapter number five is about capacity allocation problem. And the title of the chapter is general network design problem. I believe that this is not an appropriate title. Uh, but, however, the first chapter deal, the first part of the chapter deals with the topology optimization, but the other parts of the chapter describe optimal capacity allocation. Probably I should have reformulated the title of this chapter. Uh, the time-dependent vehicle routing problem and your critical remark. about delays and links. I th thought it was interesting to use the results that we obtained for networks. But I believe that it is common to use some other methods, but we wanted to use a different approach and decide what will happen if time-dependent vehicle routing will depend on travel demand. And we demonstrated it in one of the chapters. As for the Gaussian model, for the model of traffic emission, yes, I used the Gaussian model, but you believe that the cell-based models seem to be more appropriate. Yes, there are there are papers 
which use cell-based models for the research. But we decided to use the common methods used for this particular thesis and decided to see how the parameters and links change. So we used the Gaussian model. I accept the last critical remark about the misprints. As for the dimensions, thank you for your question. Yes, there are problems with dimensions. In this class of problems, we need to model special algorithms, not standard optimization algorithms. And therefore, we have a problem with dimensions here. For example, Leblanc in 1975 published a research work in this area, and they regard a limited number of routes, which decreases the dimensions in the problem. I'm sure that if we follow this common methodology, we will have viable results. But the articles that I have read about the problems of algorithms and dimensions say that in large area road networks such as ch Chicago, algorithms work and calculate up to eight hours. But I think this is a feasible solution. We can always find a solution. So uh, the question is how long we will have to wait. So there were results for 10 and for 12 hours for major cities. Uh, I have not come across any articles that use supercomputers. Uh, probably uh, we should use this supercomputer which is in the resource center of our university. This is how I see it, thank you. Do you find the answer satisfying? Thank you, yes, I'm quite satisfied. Now I'm going to read out my report. Since the other members of the dissertation board have read their reports in detail and the reports are on the website, I'm going to omit the first part which describes the relevance, the practical significance and the scientific novelty. But I also have some critical remarks. They are as follows. When you describe the traffic assignment problem, according to the principle of wardrop, you should have shown their former link with the problem of the flow with minimal cost. The problem of competitive routing was first formulated in relation to te telecommunication networks. Unfortunately, you do not give a comparative analysis in your thesis. The term transit networks is normally used for routes of public transport. But your models include uh, a broader concept. You should have clarified this in the thesis. You use the concept smart power grid, and it can be used in different aspects as well. So I believe you should have clarified this uh, concept as well. And there are some misprints in the thesis. So there are many pages in the thesis, and this is unavoidable. Thank you for reading my thesis and for being the chairperson of the dissertation board. As for your critical remarks, Yes, I believe I should have established a link between my problem, the problem that I solved in the thesis, and the problem of the flow with the minimal cost. But 
I failed to do so, but I, I should help. Thank you for this critical remark. As for the competitive routing, yes, you are right. In the second part of my thesis, I speak about group routing and I make references to articles such as those written by Altman and Lazar, and these articles deal with telecommunication networks. But I failed to mention the link between the group routing in telecommunication networks. I should have done so. The term transit networks is normally used to denote public transportation networks. We use this term in a broader sense. Yes, you're right. I should have clarified this in my thesis. As for the power smart grid, I have already spoken about it when I answered uh, the questions by another member of the dissertation board. Yes, you're right. Smart power grid is normally used in many research works, but I did not give a definition of the power smart grid. I only uh, mentioned that this is a power grid with multiple users. I didn't give a specific definition of what I mean here. Yes, I accept the last critical remark, and I'm sorry for the misprints. I would like to say that the thesis comply with the major requirements set forth in the relevant order of St. Petersburg State University. So we have read out all the reports of the members of the dissertation board, and you have answered all the critical remarks. Since you answered the questions after each, after the reading of each report, let's give the floor to the research advisor. It was my pleasure to be to listen to Alexander Kurotov's presentation today, and I felt really proud and satisfied of the efforts he has put into this study. He started dealing with this issue when he was a student, and the first studies he conducted focused on the traffic on Vasilyevsky Island. We tried to optimize traffic on Vasilyevsky Island, and the results were approved by the Academy of Transport and the administration of uh, Vasilyevsky region. This is what shaped the motivation to conduct further research. Seemingly, the style of work typical of Alexander Kruatov is telling of his really personal motivation. He was really motivated to achieve the best, the highest result. He showed, he revealed himself as a qualified professional, as an independent scholar. The results we obtained in the study if they applied in such huge road networks in big metropolitan areas, such in Moscow or St. Petersburg, then this will definitely increase the efficiency of road networks in big metropolitan areas. 
I made myself familiar with the development program of St. Petersburg strategic plan of development. Average time, transit time in St. Petersburg in 2009, according to that program, was 23 kilometers per hour. Can you imagine that? For the year 2015, they wanted to reach the average speed of 25 kilometers per hour. Uh, it's not effective enough for such a big city as St. Petersburg. If we have a look at what's going on in New York, where there are so many road users, it's 1.5% higher than in St. Petersburg, and the average speed there is 37 kilometers per hour, which means that the research is really relevant. Even if we have simple nonlinear functions, these results cannot be achieved. I believe that the experience that Alexander Kravatov gained during his academic path will find practical application. He has great, great organizing skills. He was selected uh, head of the Council of Young Scholars. It was useful because he is aware of how we develop young scholars at St. Petersburg State University. So I'm for conferring the academic degree, and I don't have any critical remarks. That was Professor Zakharov, uh, the CISIS advisor. We have a technical issue. So now both bot members and not bot members, non bot members can join an open question and answer session. You can come up with your criticism, come up with some advice, recommendations. Are there any non bot members who would like to take the floor? Do you have any ideas about the research findings? And what about board members? We would like to take the floor as well. Now that's time for non board members. Okay, I don't see anyone willing to take the floor. The next item of our agenda is when the broadcast is off, and we are going to discuss the results of the defense privately. If there is anything that you would like to to say openly. I'm a bit curious as a scholar. The results were applied in the city of Omsk in Russia. Was it difficult to obtain initial data to solve their tasks? Thank you for the question about the source data. It was challenging to obtain the source data. To meet this end, we took the following steps. First off, according to the agreement that we signed, an educational institution in Omsk used a field, field research students helped to collect data and they conducted measurements, questionnaires were used, but this only gave a limited picture because you cannot survey all the citizens of the city. These were the first steps in the study. Then we analyzed the results of field measurements, students put down the number of people who got on and got off public transport at each public transport stops all over the city. We were lucky to make use of the system that they use in public transport in Omsk. It allows to 
count the number of all the people who enter public transport. So thus, we knew how many people used public transport. Um, you could have used the Yandex data. Well, when we got this tender in Omsk and we received the phone call to help make these measurements, this is what they started with. Please be aware that in Omsk, no Yandex will help you. You will not be able to get any data from, from it. So when we arrived, we got down to work. It's a beautiful city, really. My regards to all the citizens of this wonderful city. So we really had to use field measurements to collect the source data. We're now tracking similar tenders all over Russia. The situation is changing for the better. There are major companies entering this market. But this market is being developed at the moment. These companies provide equipment which allows to obtain really precise data. The equipment is expensive. expensive. This market is just being shaped in Russia. It's at the very early stage with development. I only know two companies which deal with this issue in Russia, which is great because that's a nice niche. Are you satisfied with the answers? Yes, thanks a lot. I have some associations in mind with the term digital economy. We had a government order not a long time ago about digital economy, and one of the items was major cities. There should be sensors all over the city. They have to be supplied by power because batteries can go flat too fast. So the whole set of data, which describes flows and routes and how contested the traffic is. So this data is supposed to be collected by these sensors. When, if it comes to students who count the number of people who got on and got off the buses, well, 50 years ago, I saw a similar system applied in St. Petersburg in the southern part of the city, in the area of Kupchina. If there is no stable feedback, such government visions and decrees are not very feasible. I mean digital economy. Traffic optimization is really a crucial task when developing a smart metropolitan area. Is there anyone else willing to take the floor? You're welcome. The thing is, is that we should speak during the question answer session, not only about the results of the study and how, where they can be, can be applied, but also uh, about the future steps in the study. Well, how can we at least increase the speed up to 28 kilometers per hour from 23 kilometers per hour? The first thing that comes to mind is about these sensors and video cameras that could track what's going on on the city's road. This is the focus of my studies, and it's a vital component of a smart city plan. We should also have a look at simple irritation processes which regulate traffic flow at every traffic light, at every 
turn and crossroads. Usually, they are easy to program. They converge easily in general. Just to have a look if they create equilibrium or not. This is what I touched upon in my report. And the third issue, and it's about the emissions. The most effective work of traffic lights is an independent problem. Many of us have been in London. You know that the city has narrow streets. And it creates an impression that you will stand for a longer time, and it takes you less time to reach your destination. However, the traffic is controlled effectively, and the flow goes almost nonstop. I hope that our active doctor of uh, science to be will be actively developing these this issue I have a question with which is a bit off topic what about your Omsk project what was the volume of calculations that you made. So let me speak about the dimension of my study. There are 2,000 public transport stops in Omsk, 152 routes of public transport, and 3,000 vehicles. Omsk is populated by 1.3 million people. So the number of vehicles is a bit excessive. In 2009, there were 5,000 vehicles. So by the beginning of our study, we, they were able to decrease in three, four years the number of uh, vehicles, minibuses. How did we do that? We used a heuristic algorithm, several algorithms. And we were working in close collaboration with local experts. We didn't create some artificial intelligence that could solve some complex tasks. But it was a step-by-step -step iterative work done in collaboration with experts. We analyzed their feedback closely. We didn't face any major problems with the dimension of the study. We were afraid to make a mistake because it was a real project, a project that should help 1.3 million people living in Omsk. So we didn't want to negatively affect the more or less stable situation with the city's traffic. So we were careful with our conclusions and careful when uh, giving recommendations. Thank you. The discussion is over. And now I would like all the board members to leave the hall so that we can discuss the results of the defense. I would like you also to switch off the broadcast.
естественный момент прошел, диссертационный совет обсудил. The dissertation board has discussed the results of the defense. Five out of five board members uh, have voted for conferring the academic degree. It should be an open voting. Everyone should have a word and say whether they are for or against. Professor Peterson, I vote for. <laughs> Professor Yerzin. <laughs> Professor Yerzin, please. I also vote for. <laughs> Professor <laughs> Konnov. <laughs> I vote for. <laughs> Professor Dogoy. <laughs> I vote for. I have also voted for Professor Prasalov. So we are conferring the academic degree. Our congratulations. According to the agenda, Alexander Karatov should take the floor with the closing speech. No more than two minutes, please. First off, I'm really grateful to the members of the dissertation board who found time and took effort to read my CVs. I really appreciate that. Thanks a lot. I'd like to thank my CVs advisor, my consultant and my mentor, who has been guiding me for almost 10 years. I thank him for his support, and I'm sure that together we will be able to achieve even more. Thanks a lot to one and all. The panel session is over. I thank all the participants.